thoughts, your reaction to the Supreme Court ruling this morning? Well, I'm not surprised. Uh, you know, this, we tried to warn the Treasurer about uh, this item, as many others, during this budget process, and the Governor as well. Um, I think the Supreme Court just articulated what most of New Jersey is beginning to find out, that the Governor cannot and is not living up to the promises he made when he, run, when he ran for Governor to fund education fully and to lower people's taxes. What we've learned is that he's put children at risk and that he has driven up the highest property taxes in the nation even higher. And the, this is the $500 million to the 31 poorest districts. Steve Sweeney just told us a few minutes ago that he thinks the state should spend a billion and take care of all of the 205 underfunded and poorly performing districts. Your thoughts? Well, the Supreme Court was a determination by those who filed, and the, the people that brought the lawsuit were those who represented what was the former Abbott districts. And I, I say that term, I don't think we focus on that enough, as the former Abbott districts, because the school funding formula that we passed, which was constitutional, eliminated that term. Uh, the governor's failure to fund children at risk throughout the state has uh, brought that term back to life and put those children at risk, as well as children in districts that I represent, where those school districts, however, did not join the law. Are you comfortable with the governor punching onto the legislature to come up with a solution to this? You know, I've, all, I, I've played sports my whole life, and uh, real leaders want the ball when the game is on the line. They don't punt it to the other side. So what happens now? Well, our Constitution calls for the governor to present a budget to us, and unfortunately the budget that the governor presented is not constitutionally valid. Uh, we've got time left. He should go back to the drawing board. He talked in January about crafting his own school funding formula. You notice he never got around to that because that's what I continue to refer to as roll up your sleeves public policy. He talks about health insurance reform, yet he's not drafted a bill of his own. He talks a lot, but he doesn't actually get down to doing the things that are needed to fix the problems in the state. So. Um, it's unfortunate, I think, hopefully I'm, I'm willing to sit down and, and work with him on things that are important. There's no more important issue than this because it drives property taxes. I would like to have the opportunity to work with him in a bipartisan effort to fix what is wrong with his budget. Um, the reality is if, if he can't agree with us on restoring a women's health program for $7.5 million, I suspect he's not going to like the ideas that we present for the $500 million to help kids at risk. But. It, it, it's, it's becoming more and more clear every day that uh, his promises are not being fulfilled and that he's putting these children at risk, he's putting education at risk, he's putting women's health care at risk, and he's driving up the property taxes of the state. Will I go ahead and uh, propose ideas? We have. We continue to. You know, we, we showed them uh, money through a rebate program last year that would have restored the $7.5 million to the women's health program. Just unwilling to accept it. Uh, I think women's health, much like the ideology of funding children who are at risk for education, I don't think if we found $10 billion in new revenue, as we found in the April surprise, that the governor would restore some of these, because I think they're ideological cuts. I asked the governor if he would make recommendations to you regarding what to do about the situation, and he said that essentially he's already done that. He's made all of his cabinet commissioners available. They've presented options. and So he, he's basically saying he's already done it, now it's up to you. The ball's in your court, the ball will be back in his court when you present him with your budget. Yeah, I, you know, again, I think the governor doesn't understand how the process works, and, and uh, maybe he's not listening to the hearings. I suspect he does because of his responses, but his commissioners did not come in and offer other alternatives. They came in and defended his budget, which has now been determined, as we've warned him, not to be constitutionally valid. So, uh, you know, this isn't about uh, whose turn it is. This is about working in a bipartisan fashion. It is his responsibility. Uh, to present the budget, and it's our responsibility to uh, appropriate the funds that, that we ultimately agree, and in this case in a bipartisan fashion. Um, you know, the only other thing that I would say is there's a huge discrepancy uh, between the Office of Legislative Services revenues and that of the governor and his treasurer. And I said at the hearing the other day, some of you may remember, that I was very skeptical of those numbers. In February, March, they were less than one half of one percent apart. Uh, when the April numbers came in, OLS was twice the amount. Um, the governor uh, may want to punt the responsibility of the tough policy decisions to us, but he still holds the responsibility of approving the financial numbers. It is his responsibility to certify those numbers for the budget. So it would help that if the same people that he worked with to be within one half of one percent, he could work with again to find out what is the difference in their revenues with the Office of Legislative Services has twice the anticipated revenues that Treasury found when people filed their tax returns in April. That would help close this gap.